are talking about planetary motion today, um, and I'm going to talk about Kepler, Kepler's three laws. But in order to understand about Kepler, we need to learn about Tycho Brahe first. Tycho Brahe was a very, very uh, well-paid and famous observer. Okay, and so Tycho Brahe was an excellent astronomer who was paid a lot of money by his king to make observations in the sky. All right, extremely precise too, and and really needs the credit that he that he he should get as much credit as possible for being extremely precise. Because if you think about what's going on, he had to see at night. He'd have to look up in the skies and see where planets were every single day and see where those planets moved and to compare it to where it was a month ago and compare it to and see how those things were moving up in the sky and to figure out those tiny super precise things and if he wasn't as precise as he was then we would not and it have learned as much about planets as we did and kepler especially okay so he was very good a very good astronomer um the knock against him was that he believed that the earth or the, that the earth was the center of the universe. And so he believed in a, um, a geocentric universe where the sun and everything revolved around us. Okay. So Tycho Brahe, he was given lots of money. Okay. He had a really nice house or crib. He was a night owl. So you put all those things together. What do you think you would do? What do you think Tico did if he was being given a lot of money, a really nice house? He had to be a night owl because he had to do all these observations. What do you think Tico Brahe did? That's right. Tico Brahe loved to party. He loved to party. Okay. So here are a few things to know about Tico. He owned a pet elk. Okay. Which got drunk and fell down the stairs. Um, this is not appropriate, but he owned a dwarf named Jep, who was like his court jester. So he was a very strange man. He was a very eccentric man. And that eccentricity, being eccentric, is going to be useful later. He also had a golden nose. And so if you notice the picture, he had a nose that was golden because he lost his nose in a duel. There was even controversy surrounding Tycho Brahe's death. So think about what's going on. If you uh, are getting paid by a king, it was a custom that you could not leave the table. If you had a king come to visit or royalty come to visit, you could not leave the table until the king or, or the royalty did. So one, one possibility that they said maybe why Tycho Brahe died was his bladder exploded because he was having a party. The king had come to visit and he had to go to the bathroom and couldn't. So his bladder exploded. I don't think it's really true, but it's a fun story. OK, what's probably more likely is that he played with mercury. Maybe he was poisoned by somebody else, but more than likely he liked playing with mercury, which is at the time was not uncommon. OK, they have stories about Isaac Newton playing with mercury and a lot of people. And frankly, when I was in school, still people were allowed to have mercury in school and you'd have sometimes you'd put mercury in your hand and feel it around and see what happens. They'd call it Quicksilver. And it wasn't until later on that they realized you were getting poisoned. And that's why they got rid of all mercury thermometers in schools. And, and you don't see those anymore. Okay. So here it's terrible that somebody dies. However, this is what happens. While Tycho Brahe is getting paid and being a night owl and get all these observations, Johannes Kepler comes along. And Johannes Kepler used to be a teacher. Um, and he went to Brahe to visit because he wanted to get the observations. Okay. But Kepler, Johannes Kepler is considered heliocentric. He believed that the sun was the center of the universe. So he goes and visits Tycho Brahe, knocks on the door and says, Hey, how's it going? 
um, listen, I want to use all your data um, and prove that you're wrong, and I want to prove that uh, the Earth is not the center of the universe, the sun is. So obviously, Tycho Brahe was like, nope, and didn't want to help. But, but Kepler was allowed to stay there, and then Tycho Brahe dies, and Johannes Kepler steals all of Tycho Brahe's data and starts checking out and, and figuring out the paths of, of all the planets. Okay, so here, from that, we're going to have Kepler's three, three laws. The first law is the law of ellipses. And this took a really long time. And, and for us, it's hard to even imagine how you do this now. Okay, but think about what's going on. It's one thing if you are sitting still and everything's moving around you. Okay, but it's a whole lot harder to figure out how all the planets are moving if you're moving too. Okay, so if I have one object and I'm sitting still and I see everything moving around it, maybe I can say, oh, okay, those are all going around me. But what if I'm moving along with it? That's really hard to do. And so what Kepler did was he found Mars, took all the data from Mars, had the idea that we were moving, and he plotted from Tycho Brahe's data and tried to, try to figure out what that shape would look like. And it looked very close to a circle. But every time he tried to line up that circle perfectly so that, you know, oh, you know, there's January, it's the Mars is on, on this circle here. Every time the planets are just slightly off and not fitting on a perfect circle. Okay. And what he finally realized was that there are ellipses. All the shapes of all the planets paths in the solar system follow ellipses with a sun at one of the foci. All right. We have a lab, and I'll explain more about how to draw an ellipse with circles later. Okay, next thing you notice was this. If you looked at a point, if you looked at how far that planet traveled, and this is a really, really gross exaggeration of the ellipses. The other one too. It's going to be closer to a circle, but it's a lot easier for demonstration to have these long, elongated, really high uh, eccentricity ellipt ellipses. If you looked at how far a planet traveled in a month, from some point, okay, let's say whatever. This is um, August right here, all right? So let's say the planet travels this far in August in the ellipse. When it's closer to the sun, it's gonna go faster. So he, from here to there, let's say that is another month. Okay, let's say March, all right? So the distances will be farther in a month if you're closer to the sun and you're going faster okay and when you're further away from the sun the distances are going to be much shorter okay but if you took the measurement and tried to get a distance from um one point to another if you looked at the distances to the sun at each point and you tried to trace out the area what he found out was for equal amount of times, no matter what the shape and no matter how close or farther, far away the planet was from the sun, the areas were always the same. Okay, so you could always trace that out. And that has that can lead to this understanding of gravity, especially what um, Isaac Newton can work with off of that and understand this area. Maybe that kind of represents the gravity on that planet. All right. And the last thing is Kepler's third law, which is a, he found out, and this is the most helpful, he found out that for every planet, if you took the time it took to revolve around the sun, okay, and you took the average distance away from the sun, and you squared the time, the period, T, and you cubed the distance away, the radius, get that R, cubed, those ratios were the same for every single planet. So if I had Earth and I took the period, oh, I know what that is, right? The period going around the sun is going to be 365 days. And I took the average distance to the sun, okay? And I took the 365 days and, and squared that. And I took the average distance and cubed that, okay? And got that ratio. Then I looked at some other planet and did the same thing. I would get the same exact ratio, Okay, and that's extremely important with helping build uh, your solar system. Because let's say you find another planet. And let's say you find some other planet far away later on, long after Kepler's gone. 
but you find the planet and you can figure out its average distance from the sun. You can't wait around. Those planets far away are going to be revolving around the sun, you know, what, 300 years. You're not going to be around that long. But what you can do is you can work it into this equation and you can then calculate exactly how long it's going to take for that planet to revolve around the sun. Okay, so that's how extremely important it was and that's how helpful um, Kepler's equation here was because it was able to build together our solar system.